back. It is Tuesday, 28th day of September 2021. I am Dan Koontz. Just three more days left in the month, and that's it. September is, the, is, is always seems to be the month that just goes quicker than the other months. And I think it's because everything is fired back up again, COVID world or not. Kids go back to school. Sports seasons kick into full gear. Uh, I don't know. It just seems that way with September. Plus, the, the weather is normally quite good. Right now, it's quite chilly. It's 43 outside of our studios. We haven't been that cool in quite some time, and we're in for a pretty cool day today. Sunshine, quite a bit of it. A little wind at times, um, but it's uh, it's going to be cold for, for this time of the year. Certainly well below normal, about 10 degrees below normal for afternoon high. Forecast details are coming up. Another busy day in the bullpen. We'll have some news for you uh, to get you informed on this Tuesday morning. Yesterday at this time, the Mariners had a 4.9% chance of making the postseason, 4.9% chance. That was yesterday. Today, it's now an 8.9% chance of making the postseason. They pretty much got to win out. <clears throat> they began that yesterday by beating Oakland. We'll have highlights of that. Plus, we'll preview what we got going on in the world of prep sports. We got soccer tonight. From the off the field of the Apple Bowl, the Davis Pirates uh, coming to take on the Wenatchee Panthers. We'll have that for you tonight at uh, 645. Plus, we'll have the obscure holiday today in history. Some celebrity birthdays. Mike McNaughty has got an opinion you've never seen before because we've never aired it before. And in the back half of the hour, our very own Jefferson Robbins had a chance to visit via Zoom with Kirk Hudson, who's the incoming general manager of the Chelan County PUD. He got the gig a couple of weeks ago. Steve Wright will be retiring at the end of this year. Kirk Hudson will be taking over, and we'll have that conversation with Jefferson and Kirk in the back half of the program. Let's get going. Let's see what we got out there on this Tuesday with our cameras around the valley. <coughs> Excuse me. Good morning to the valley proper. It looks like we have the cross camera zipped back a little bit, if that's even a terminology. These are PTZ cameras. That means they can we can pan them, we can tilt them, we can zoom them. We can move them around. They're not locked into position like that. So we say good morning to the Wenatchee Valley. Sunrise this morning, 6.56. Sunset tonight, 6.45, 11 hours and 49 minutes of daylight. We had 66 yesterday, our normal high this time of the year, right around 72 or 73. And we got a little bit of light rain. Uh, we had three one-hundredths of an inch of rain as measured up the paint board. Other places got heavier rain, but that was pretty much what we were expecting. Uh, we're not really expecting any real rain today. In fact, we'll have quite a bit of sunshine today. Then the next round of rain, probably on Thursday into Thursday night. Again, forecast details are coming up. Camera two. Oh, that's a good view from the Waterville camera. <coughs> Looking back down towards uh, uh, the Columbia River. Earthquake Point jumps right out at you. Now, you can't miss that along the highway. That's ni Highway 97A on the far side of your screen and Highway 97 on the bottom of your screen. That's the Waterville camera pointing back down towards the Columbia River. That baby is way up there. What a spectacular view that is. Camera number three. We are off to see, I want to say Leavenworth. Is that the Tumwater uh, Canyon camera? It is. By the way, we got some really fascinating footage. We're going to show it to you during the news hour, during the news update, of what they were doing last week. You remember uh, they closed Stevens Pass for a day uh, last week to, to get the highway ready to go for the upcoming winter driving conditions. Well, uh, the DOT sent us a video of what exactly they were doing on Stevens Pass. We'll have that for you when we get to the news. Good morning, Leavenworth and camera number four. Oh, I like that. That's cool. Is that the lower? No, wait a minute. Let me think here. Is that jump out? Is that jump off ridge? Wow. Well, that's a, that's a unique angle from Jump Off Ridge. That's pretty cool. I like that. We have it zoomed in quite a bit. So we could, we're seeing almost all of East Wenatchee and the East Wenatchee bench from Jump Off Ridge high atop the Malaga area. That's a cool view. I like that. Now we've used that camera a lot, but normally we have it tilted or moved a little bit more towards Wenatchee, but that's a cool view. Sweetness. Good morning to our friends at Jump Off Ridge. Don't jump off Jump Off Ridge, by the way. It's a long way down and you will get hurt. Okay, from the National Weather Service, your forecast. Lots of sunshine, a little on the breezy side today. We still have that slow-moving cold front. That's still coming in. We're looking at right around mid-60s for our uh, high temperature today, and it's going to take us a while to climb up there. So we're going to be a good 7 or 8 degrees below normal. Again, quite a bit of sunshine, but some windy conditions at times. Uh, uh, pretty consistent wind, about 10 to 15 miles an hour. 
with the occasional gust above 20. Look at the overnight low, 43. That's where we're at right now for the overnight low. We're going to have clear skies, and that means pretty chilly temperatures. Uh, on Wednesday, partly cloudy, maybe a little bit of light rain Wednesday afternoon. Cooler still. Can't get out of this cold air. 63 for the high on Wednesday. Best chance of more rain is going to be on Thursday. We're going to warm back up again. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weather system, not a big weather maker coming in on Thursday, but it's going to pack a little bit more moisture and slightly warmer air. It's going to come from the southwest. So 71 on uh, Thursday, Friday, again, a little bit of rain possible. I have 69, and then the weekend <clears throat> as we welcome October. Uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, lots of sunshine. Highs in the lower 70s on Saturday. Upper 70s on Sunday and Monday. I was predicting I don't think we're going to see 80 degrees again. I may be proven wrong. We hit 81 on Saturday. So we'll see. There's your forecast from the National Weather Service. Fairly typical autumnal kind of weather for late September, early October. After one minute break, we'll give you the news that you need on this Tuesday, the 28th day of September. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. Kids are resilient. I just love their energy. They bounce back so quickly. I love the stories they tell. I love just their charisma, their character. Um, I love to see that subtle smile that you pull out of a kid, you know, when you, you start talking with them about something they really like. I just love what I do, and I can't imagine I would be as happy doing anything else. Hi, I'm Dr. Michelle Sandberg, and I'm running for Wenatchee School Board. As a doctor, parent, and current board member, I'm excited and relieved that our students have now returned to school full time with precautions in place to keep everyone safe. We're not quite back to pre-COVID times at school, but we are moving in the right direction with the community right behind us. Let's continue to make progress in a thoughtful and respectful manner for all of our students. Vote for Michelle Sandberg for Wenatchee School Board. We just dropped a couple more uh, degrees. We're down to 41 here in downtown Wenatchee. We're talking lower to mid 60s today. Quite a bit of sunshine, breezy conditions, light rain possible on a Wednesday and Thursday, right on into Friday, and then a very pleasant weekend coming up. We begin with this story. Wenatchee police were looking for a thief who last week lowered himself by a rope into Bagdon's on South Wenatchee Avenue, then made off with some tools. This is the video surveillance that we got. It shows the man first dropping the rope down from a skylight and then shimmying down into the cabinet and millwork business. The break-in, by the way, happened a week ago, last Tuesday morning at about 4 a.m. Anybody with information on the burglary or the suspect is asked to contact the Wenatchee Police Department coming down through a skylight in the roof of Bagdon's on South Wenatchee Avenue. Hmm. Clever, but illegal. Wenatchee police are trying to locate a person who may have been the victim of an attempted vehicular assault. This happened at a car wash in North Mission last Tuesday. Police say they've already identified the driver of a white SUV who last Tuesday at about 5.30 in the morning apparently drives toward the man before hitting a wall at the car wash. The man, as you can see, is seen stumbling and falling before getting up and eventually running away. Anybody with information on the man is asked to call Rivercom's non-emergency line at 663-9911. Though COVID-19 hospitalizations remain high here in our area, the latest numbers from Confluence Health shows a sharp decline this week. After more than two weeks of COVID patient numbers that exceeded 50, Confluence on yesterday reported 39 COVID-19 patients at their hospital. Of those 39, Confluence says 36 not fully vaccinated. 10 patients are in the hospital's intensive care unit, nine of whom are not fully vaccinated. 11 of those hospitalized are from Chelan County, 8 from Douglas County, 9 from Okanagan County, and 7 from Grant County. Douglas County Commissioners today will order suspended County Treasurer Natalie Marks to take out more insurance to cover federal tax payments she failed to deposit. Commissioners suspended Marks from office late last month over an estimated $93,000 in fines from the IRS for late deposits of county payroll tax. Marks is a former deputy treasurer who was elected to the office in 2018. She already holds a $150,000 surety bond, but commissioners say that might not be sufficient and want her to obtain a quarter million dollar bond 
to cover the county's losses. That's expected to take place at a public hearing this morning at 1030. Lincoln Park in Wenatchee will not have a bicycle pump track this year. That project is going to have to wait until 2022. The Wenatchee City Council on Thursday withdrew from a contract with the nonprofit Evergreen Mountain Bike Alliance, which said it simply doesn't have the volunteers it needs to complete the park before winter comes. After two months of negotiation of the contract um, terms, Evergreen communicated to us that they could not meet the terms of the contract as they bid it. Since there were no other bidders, we have no other option other than to rescind this approval. And then we're wrapping it up, which we are already currently working on, into the larger Lincoln Park project. And that will be going to add next month. Yes, we had a time frame in there that they had to have it completed by a certain date. And a lot of their work's volunteer work. And they, a lot of the volunteers were fighting fires. And they basically said they didn't think they could make the, the deadline. I think we sort of wanted to extend the deadline, but I think our lawyers said we can't extend the deadline that we've been this way, so we got to come back to them. In that same meeting last Thursday, the council voted to give Wenatchee police officers a 4% pay raise over the next couple of years. They also agreed to join the city of East Wenatchee to establish a low barrier shelter for the homeless, and they also uh, opened up almost nine acres at the intersection of Wenatchee Avenue and McKittrick Street for possible future development. And finally, it's sometimes inconvenient when a highway closes for a while, but in the case of mountain passes, sometimes it's a good thing, and that was the case last week when they shut down Highway 2 near Stevens Pass. The Washington State Department of Transportation did. They closed it for several hours. They needed to winterize the pass for the upcoming snowfall, and here's a video of what exactly they were doing. Thanks to WashDOT for that video, and that's what's making news on this Tuesday morning. We'll have a newscast for you like we always do on weeknights at 5, 6, and 10. Eric Grandstrom handling sports, Grant Olson in the anchor chair. And with a preview, here's Grant. Oh, wait a minute, we don't have it yet? What do you want me to do in the meantime? I can sing you a song. Would you like me to sing you a song? I'm not going to sing you a song. They don't pay me enough to sing songs around here. You got it yet, Uriah? Should we just skip past it? Okay, we'll skip... Trust me, Grant knows what he's doing. We'll have a news for you tonight at 5, 6, and 10, gathered and disseminated by our, our award-winning news crew. And at the bottom of your screen are all the different ways you can get hold of us. If you want to request a song for me to sing on Wake Up in Angie Valley, you can email us directly. You can go to our Facebook page. You can go to our homepage. You can pick up the telephone and give us a call. We're going to take a break. When we come back, the Mariners pretty much need to win out if they have any chance of making the postseason, but they're still alive. And they did it to Oakland last night. Highlights of the Mariners and the A's when we come back. Sports is one minute away. You're watching Wake Up on Angie Valley on the NCLB Live channel. When I was about 16, I got in a relationship. He um, hit me for the first time in front of his daughter. He physically abused me in front of my children. I couldn't do it no more. Sage was there for me when I needed them. I didn't hear a lecture from them. I didn't hear anything, but just acceptance. And that's what I needed at the time. And they help you with everything that you need to move on in life and heal.
much is the foundation of my day. It centers me. It makes me just feel better inside and out. It's part of my daily routine, basically, so I feel complete, you know. Not just a physical health, but it's a mental health. And uh, you could almost even say it's a, you know, a spiritual thing for me to be able to get my workout in on a regular basis. Quarter after the hour in sports, the Mariners found themselves down 3-0 before they even saw a single pitch last night at T-Mobile Park. But uh, Mitch Hanniger, Ty France, the rest of the offense, they got their gear together before the night was through, and Seattle rolls to a 13-4 victory. Seth Brown's three-run home run at the top of the first was a rude greeting for Seattle starter Chris Flexen, but Ty France hit, had the first of his four hits on the night in the third. That scored a run. Louis Torrens tied it later in the third on a two-run base hit. The Mariners found themselves trailing again in the fourth inning. That was before J.P. Crawford and Ty France drove in runs apiece, and then up to the plate comes Mitch Hanniger. 3-1 to Hanniger. Barrel, crush, this is on its way! Three-run home run, Mitch Hanniger! Blow the doors off the A's in the fourth inning! A three-run home run here in the bottom of the fourth, his 36th home run of the year, and it's now the Mariners 8 and the Athletics 4. Hanniger would come up again in the bottom of the sixth, again with two people on base, and here you go. Well, 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 Mitch Hanniger batting with two men aboard once again. Hanniger, he's got another! It's his second three-run home run! He has just kicked the teeth in on the A's! His first time up, he had a fastball out of the ballpark. This time it's a breaking ball. Exit Velo again at 105, 421 feet. It's driven in six. And that's 37 home runs on the year. France would add another uh, base hit, another two-run base hit in the seventh inning. The Mariners pull away. Pretty easy. 13-4 to the final. So Seattle's game with Oakland, that was the only game with an impact on the wild card race on Monday. Seattle's win moves the M's within a game and a half of Boston. Boston didn't play last night for the second wild card spot. The Red Sox are in Baltimore. Blue Jays host the Yankees today. Seattle and Oakland play game two of their three-game series at 7-10 tonight. Seahawks coach Pete Carroll met with the media on Monday. He always does. He looks at the entire game film, and then he sits down with the media to talk about what went right and what went wrong and what went wrong Sunday in Minnesota. They couldn't convert on third downs in the second half. Offensively in the second half, um, you know, we had two shots on the first two drives that we didn't convert, and it made a big difference. We had, we had you know, we, I think we had a sack situation that, that took place in there that made it a real long situation. But those are crucial because the other team was able to convert, and they held the football and did a nice job keeping it away. You know, I, I, if, if, if I had a, you know, you'd ask me before and say, hey, you give up nine points in the se second half, how would you feel about that? Well, I would have felt pretty good about it, but not, not the way it happened because our offense wasn't able to, uh, to get on the field. You know, the three long drives, I mentioned I think it was a five, a seven, and an eight something. You know, those were, those were long possessions, and uh, we're sitting there waiting. You know, and, and I think the offense had the ball twice and got the ball back with four minutes, 4.30 in the game, you know, and so uh, in the second half. So um, that's, that's third down conversions on both sides of the ball. And so we got to work together much better than that. And, and uh, it's, you know, it it's, it's just tells the story, unfortunately. Seahawks will try and do better. They got their first divisional game of the year. They'll be down in Santa Clara to take on the 49ers Sunday afternoon, 105 on Fox. We'll be out and about again today. We'll be at Lee Boff to field at the Apple Bowl tonight for girls soccer. The Panthers hosting the Pirates, uh, Big Nine soccer, 7 o'clock. Sebastian Braga, Matt Wisen will have the game for you pregame at 645 here on the NCAA Live channel. Take a look at the rest of the soccer schedule today. Shalam will host Quincy at 430. Tenasket travels to Brewster. Liberty Bell will host Pateras, and Okanagan plays at Lake Roosevelt. That's at 4.30. Bridgeport visits Manson at 5. Cashmere clashes with Cascade in Leavenworth at 6. At 7 o'clock tonight, besides Wenatchee and Davis, you got Eastmont at Eisenhower, and Moses Lake will be in Sunnyside. A very busy prep volleyball schedule tonight. Look at all those matches. 24 high schools, 12 matches. 6.30 games have Cascade hosting Cashmere. OMAC will be at Tenasket. Orville hosts Brewster. Manson travels to Lake Roosevelt. Liberty Bell is at Oakland. At 7, you got Eastmont welcomes Eisenhower. 
Wenatchee will be in Yakima, the gateway to Wapato, to take on Davis. Moses Lake will host Sunnyside. Quincy's at Chelan. Bridgeport takes on Cascade Christian. Andy Ad is at Moses Lake Christian and Afreda at Ellensburg at 7.15. Now, those are just some of the games that people are playing or are scheduled to be playing anyway on this Tuesday. Obscure holiday. I had three of them to choose from. Today is National Good Neighbor Day. Always a good idea. National Strawberry Cream Pie Day. Again, try to avoid the food-related obscure holidays whenever I can. Today is National Drink Beer Day. For a lot of people, that's every day, as a matter of fact. Uh, there are actually two beer-related holidays. Today is National Drink Beer Day. National Beer Day itself is on April 7th. Nobody really knows who created this holiday, but we do have a general idea of beer. It goes back to what is now Iran in the 5th century BC, and then as the Roman legions began to uh, do their thing, they would introduce all of you, or pretty much to the idea of beer, then it went to the Mideast, Asia and Africa, and eventually beer is all over the world. Uh, we love our beer here in the United States of America. Uh, the U.S. beer industry alone last year shipped about 216 million barrels of beer, and uh, we buy about $105 million worth of beer every year just in this country. Just in this country, $105 million worth of beer is sold every year. By the way, at any given time, 50 million people on this planet are drunk at any given time. Not now. It's too darn early in the morning. But I will be celebrating National Drink Beer later on today when my job is done. 21 minutes after the hour. Today in history, you know, whenever Wyoming Seminary and Mansfield State Normal get together on the football field, you can throw the records right out the window. These great rivals. The very first night football game ever played took place on this date in 1892. Yeah, September 28th, 1892, 129 years ago, the first ever night football game. Wyoming Seminary taking on Mansfield State Normal in Mansfield, Pennsylvania. It didn't go very well. The lights were so dim that nobody could see what the heck was going on. And that includes the players on the field. The players on the field kept running into the light posts that they had put up for the night football game. That's a problem. After 20 minutes of play, uh, 20 minutes and a total of 10 plays, they called the game off. They said, this is dangerous. People are going to get hurt because they can't see the football, they can't see each other, and they keep running into the light poles. So let's call this one over. 129 years ago today. Uh, boy, this was a medical game changer. Penicillin. Penicillin was discovered 93 years ago today by Alexander Fleming. He was Scottish. He was a scientist. He discovered that, hey, there's this mold that seems to kill bacteria. It's growing in my laboratory. I think I just invented penicillin. He thought he had invented penicillin uh, about a month earlier, but he wasn't too sure, so he did it on purpose this time. And this time, yeah, penicillin, a real game changer even though about 10% of the world's population is actually allergic to penicillin. Penicillin, happy 93rd birthday. 80 years ago today, September 28, 1941, Ted Williams and Boston Red Sox go six for eight in a doubleheader against the Philadelphia Athletics to finish the season with a 406 batting average. Nobody has hit 400 in Major League Baseball since. 80 years ago today on the final day of the regular season, a doubleheader. Ted goes six for eight, he could have sat and had a 400 batting average, but he decided to play both games. He went six for eight, finished at 406. Nobody has ever hit 400 since. It's been 80 years, remarkable. And this was one big CBS boondoggle. September 28, 1951, 70 years ago today, CBS makes color television available to the general public. You could go to your local hardware store in Manhattan and buy yourself a TV, a color TV, 70 years ago today. It cost $499.99, which is the equivalent of about $5,000 in today's money. It was beset with problems. Number one, it's one thing to have a color television without any color programming. There really wasn't any. Advertisers said, we're not going to advertise on your color TV broadcast because nobody is going to buy this thing. Advertisers wanted nothing to do with it. They eventually manufactured 200 CBS color television sets. Uh, about 100 of them were sold. The federal government bought all the rest out so CBS wouldn't get sued by disappointed customers. Uh, and after 22 days, 
CBS discontinued color television. Full color TV. Watch the football game in full color. And a little too soon. Birthdays. Do not do unto others what you would not want done to yourself. Confucius, the Chinese teacher, editor, politician, philosopher, what have you, born in 551 BC. Nobody really knows what he looks like. That's the best thing I could do. Uh, he died in 479 BC. We think record keeping was a little sketchy uh, back then. Confucius, whose teachings and writings still have great pertinence today. Confucius, born in this date in 551 BC. We think. Pretty good idea. Thomas Crapper, who did not invent the toilet. Thomas Crapper, born this date in 1836, died in 1910 at the age of 73. The urban legend, the myth, is that Thomas Crapper invented the flush toilet. He did not. He invented the ball cock. That's the thing in your toilet basin that goes down and then goes back up again as you flush the toilet. That little mechanism is called the ball cock, which was invented by Thomas Crapper, who was born in the state in 1836. I love September 28th because it gives me a chance to say both Crapper and ball cock on television. William S. Paley, the American broadcaster, uh, the president of CBS, born 120 years ago today, ran CBS with an iron fist until they sold to Westinghouse uh, in the late 1980s. The Paley family, uh, well, ran CBS, which was the Tiffany of Networks for many, many years, one of the most powerful men in all of television. William S. Paley, born in the state in 1901. Um, Ed Sullivan, probably the most unique television personality ever. He couldn't sing, he couldn't dance, he couldn't play a musical instrument, he couldn't tell jokes, but he knew people who could sing and dance and tell jokes and play musical instruments. As far as uh, scouting out talent, nobody did it better than Ed. Of course, he was the host of the Ed Sullivan Show for 25 years, from 1948 to 1971. A really big shoe, Ed Sullivan, born in the state, also in 1901. Peter Finch, always be known for the iconic role of Howard Beale in Network. He was the very first actor ever to win a posthumous Academy Award. He won the Academy Award for Best Actor for the Movie Network about six weeks after he died of a heart attack in 1977 at the age of 60, but a great actor. Steve Largent is 67 years old today, former congressman. When he retired from the NFL, he held every major receiving record. He holds none of them now. Most touchdown receptions, most receiving yards, most everything. He had them all. Of course, he's no longer has any of those records, but he is still probably the personification of Seahawk football. Uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame, class of 1995. His number 80, the very first number in Seahawk history to be retired. Happy birthday, Steve Largent, 67. And our very own captain himself, Michael Tucker Wagner. There he is. Happy birthday to Tucker from the Presidential Advisory Commission. He is 25 years old today. Going to take a break. Got an opinion from Mike Mad Dog McNaughty, and then our very own Jefferson Robbins had a chance to sit down and chat via Zoom with Kirk Hudson, the brand new or soon to be brand new general manager to Schlein County PUD. He'll begin that gig on New Year's Day. We'll have that for you when we come back. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. What is home? A place to gather, a place to grow, provide shelter for the ones we love, eat, drink, restore, build trust. It's a place to rest when the work day is done, a place to find quiet after a night of good fun. What an honor we have at Guild to help own, finance, create, pave the way to live in home. When it comes to finding a memory care community, you want the very best. You want to know that your loved one is safe and receiving compassionate care in a loving environment. 
Fieldstone Memory Care is an innovative assisted living community designed for those with Alzheimer's, dementia, and Parkinson's disease. You'll find a community specifically designed to enrich residents' lives. The Fieldstone team is here to help you navigate the important decisions you face when a loved one has dementia or Alzheimer's. Welcome home to Fieldstone. You love to help others. You need a solid career. You can have it all with help from Charter College. Our 10-month medical assistant program prepares you to work in healthcare settings like physician offices, rehab centers, and clinics. You'll learn to take patient vitals, assist with exams, administer injections, and maintain medical records. When you're ready to launch a rewarding healthcare career, visit chartercollege.edu because we work to get you to work. If you are looking for dependable car service and repair, visit the good guys at Quick Lube and Tune. They've been keeping cars and trucks in the Wenatchee Valley running smooth for 35 years. Quick Lube and Tune is your hometown shop for a 10-minute oil change, complete tune-ups, alignments, brakes, mufflers, air conditioning service, and more. Get more life out of your vehicle by bringing it to the local guys you can trust at Quick Lube and Tune on South Wenatchee Avenue. and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, one of the things I miss about the East Coast is that here in Wenatchee, we have a very small Jewish population. Now, having a larger number of God's chosen people here locally would add some culture and culinary enhancements to our community, as well as increase our level of intriguing diversity. You know, if you're interested in learning more about Jewish culture, a great book to read is The Joys of Yiddish by Leo Rostin. This book is very entertaining. It's easy to read, both humorous and poignant. And you can get a good copy on Amazon for five to 10 bucks. Besides, winter is coming, and what else is better to do than stay inside, keep it warm, and enjoying a good book? <laughs> hey, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Join us for the NCW Library Show. We've got something for everyone. Our show is full of inspiration, learning, and fun. Check out our do-it-yourself STEM activities. Enjoy story time with Miss Claire. Get moving with an easy yoga flow with Miss Melissa. Get book recommendations from our NCW librarians and much more. Tune in each week for a new episode. Also, find us online at ncwlibraries.org and follow us on Facebook for the latest library news and programs. Be kind and read on. When Mike leaves town, it's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. Protect your family and save money with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to Guardian Services from Localtel. Call Guardian Security from Localtel now or visit localtel.net to learn more. Hey everyone, Fletcher and Amy Ellington here from Live It Up. In the investment world, ROI stands for Return on Investment. Well, how does better health, better wealth, and better relationships sound for ROI? Join us every week right here on NCW Life and learn how to invest in the most important asset, you. We're gonna answer your questions and provide some weekly inspiration so you can create a life that you love. Join us on Live It Up. Counterplay inside, picking his way back to the 10, to the five, into High School Sports is back, and NCW Life Channel's got you covered. Tune in for football, girls' soccer, and volleyball right here. A huge thank you to our sponsors, Les Schwab Tires, One Way Construction, and Save Mart. Follow all the action of high school sports on your local TV station, the NCW Life Channel. 14, they come back. Let's face it, selling your good used vehicle can be a hassle, if nothing else. Consign your vehicle here at Global Elite Motors. When you do, you'll get the best possible price because of our proprietary selling system. We offer the ability to finance, add warranties, take trade-ins, and much, much more. Each consignment vehicle we represent is thoroughly inspected and marketed to attract qualified buyers. Let us help sell your quality vehicle. Buying a vehicle? Consigning a vehicle? Stop by Global Elite Motors on Wenatchee Avenue at Global Car Care. Crystal's Restaurant and Lounge in Leavenworth has a warm environment to enhance your dining experience. 
serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Crystal's Intimate Lounge is a wonderful place to relax and dine with beautiful views of the mountains. Do you have a special occasion coming up? Call Crystal's to reserve their event space. Whether your event is grand, intimate, or casual, Crystal's provides unforgettable food and superb service. Crystal's Restaurant and Lounge, proud to be serving fabulous food and drinks. Five minutes after the hour on this Tuesday, Kirk Hudson has spent 24 years overseeing the massive supply of power generated by the Chelan County PUD. Well, come January 1st, he'll be in charge of the entire agency. The 54-year-old Hudson was named the new general manager of the PUD one week ago, replacing longtime general manager Steve Wright. Uh, he'll take the job on January 1st. He, did he took some time out last week, Kirk Hudson did, to visit with their very own Jefferson Robbins. Well, I started uh, at PUD in 1997 and uh, grew up in eastern Washington, uh, Kennewick, uh, was the town I grew up in, and then uh, went to the University of Washington for my engineering degree and then did some work in the consulting industry uh, for seven years uh, right out of college before coming here. So in 1997, uh, the PUD hired me as an engineer in our engineering and project management division. And tell us about the job that you do currently. You're managing director of generation and transmission. That's correct. Uh, so I manage what we call the bulk electric system, uh, which is the high voltage uh, part of our business, dams and uh, the transmission system. So generating uh, the electricity and then transmitting it uh, to the customers. Now, the PUD does a lot of things, but that's what people think of, I, I believe, when they think of the PUD. Is that accurate? Yeah, and especially uh, for Chelan PUD, uh, it's uh, rare for the public utility districts to have the generating resources uh, that uh, we have uh, and the other mid-Columbia PUDs. So it's uh, just a real benefit for this part of the region. Most uh, public utilities in the state uh, don't have those types of resources. Yeah, as you say, the network is, is vast and uh, it requires a lot of people to manage. So how many folks are on your team for generation and transmission? It uh, varies. We have some seasonal uh, employees uh, just uh, associated with the fish and wildlife uh, portion of our division, but somewhere between 250 and 300 is uh, about the number of employees in the generation and transmission area. And the full PUD, which you'll now be supervising, is about in the neighborhood of 750 full-time employees. Is that right? Yeah. And then uh, overall with seasonal with just over 800. Are there areas of the PUD that you feel like you need to gain familiarity with? I mean, you've been focused in, in this very important area for some time. So do you feel like there's elements of it that you still need to get your arms around to be an effective GM? Yeah, it's a pretty diversified organization. And so there are areas in the district uh, that I work very closely with, and there's other areas that uh, I don't work so close with. Um, you know, I, I have worked with all areas uh, in some capacity or another over the 24 years, uh, but in particular, the energy marketing and uh, financial side are probably the areas that uh, I'll need to get more in knowledge and experience around. Well, the stewardship of the of the Columbia is, is a major part of the PUD's uh, mission and mandate. Um, you have to take care of the river in order to make use of its resources by federal law and regulation. So um, do you foresee uh, areas of uh, the ecology of the river, uh, the caretaking of parks and, and shorelines um, where the PUD is going to have to take big steps in the future? You know, I think the the biggest thing we'll have on our screen is the relicensing process associated with Rock Island Dam. Uh, those licenses come up uh, every 30 to 50 years, depending on the term of the license. And uh, that process does uh, look at all those things you're talking about, uh, the uh, ecology of the river, the uh, fish and wildlife, natural resources side, as well as the generating side and uh, operations and maintenance of the dam. So um, I see that as our, uh, Biggest challenge uh, in the next few years is uh, obtaining another license uh, for Rock Island Dam. Uh, that would be the, I think the third license uh, that we would have for that project. And there'll be an opportunity to work with stakeholders uh, along the way to understand 
uh, what our stakeholders' interests are in the license going forward for the future. And, um, there's certainly a lot of interest on the on the river and water quality, uh, the dissolved gas in the Northwest and uh, temperature and those types of things are, are things we know that we'll be looking at uh, in terms of operating the hydropower project. And then uh, on the natural resources side, uh, fish you know, with endangered species in the Columbia River, uh, that's a constant uh, effort of ours to try and uh, move fish upstream and downstream more efficiently through our project. And we're doing a great job, but we always know that there's room for improvement. And then uh, I think you're quite familiar with our legacy on the parks and recreation side uh, with parks that uh, the community owns and operates uh, up and down the Columbia River and then up at Lake Chelan. So uh, that is one of our core values, uh, stewardship, and uh, we're committed to being good stewards of that resource. Well, the Chelan County uh, PUD general manager position is kind of a rare bird. It doesn't come along very often. Uh, Mr. Wright, whom you'll succeed, has been there about seven years, and previous managers have served a decade or, or even more. So how long had you been thinking about um, applying for the top job at your at your place of employment? You know, that's a great question. I, uh, I actually applied uh, the last go around. Um, eight years ago, I applied for the position. So I felt uh, at that time like I uh, had the experience and the skill set, and um, I feel like I'm uh, even uh, more well suited for it now because I've gained a lot of experience in the last eight years underneath Steve. Um, uh, he brought a wealth of experience to the utility and uh, had the opportunity to work in a number of capacities here. So it's really been uh, about the last eight to 10 years that I've thought about you know, that position and uh, having an interest in going after it. Have you identified projects ahead for the PUD that you see as most important, things that are going to take up a lot of your attention in the in the coming years? Yeah, there's certainly that relicensing effort at Rock Island. Um, but the, the one that uh, I see us paying a, a lot of attention to is the, the interest in the energy from our projects. Um, uh, there's uh, as the country moves to more clean energy sources, carbon-free energy sources, we're very well positioned with hydropower, and so there's a lot of interest in the energy that comes from uh, these dams. And so uh, I perceive spending quite a bit of time uh, looking at that and looking at ways we can uh, make sure we're capturing the value and make sure our community uh, gets the benefit of uh, those clean carbon free resources. So I think that'll be a big focus. We're right in the middle of uh, a tremendous amount of reinvestment in uh, the hydro uh, power facilities. We're modernizing and rehabilitating the turbines and generators at the dams. And then uh, obviously you can see the facilities uh, reinvestment around the community that uh, we've embarked upon with the new service center uh, in the north part of town. So uh, those will be big projects I'll certainly plan to be spending time on. The Douglas County PUD, for instance, has gotten into the business of uh, industrial hydrogen, producing its own hydrogen for, for use and for sale. Um, when you talk about uh, greener projects, green investment, do you see the Chelan County PUD moving in that direction, producing things other than hydropower? You know, it's hard to tell at this point in time. Um, but uh, there is a lot of movement on the hydrogen side of things. We're keeping a close eye on that. Uh, certainly uh, comparing notes with others, including Douglas PUD, uh, just to see where that industry is, is going. Um, it's uh, a little bit early for us to tell whether we're gonna move down that path or not. Um, and, but you're right, I mean, Grant PUD's got a mem memo of understanding. He's looking at some things to, as well with other companies. So. Uh, it's certainly a possibility that uh, we're keeping a close eye on. Do you think that to a certain extent, um, all uh, industries need to be looking at climate change now um, and, and hydropower is, is really no exception, although people do perceive it as clean power. Do you see uh, steps in the future for the PUD to reduce its own carbon footprint, like say, electrification of that very large fleet of vehicles that you have to use to, to maintain the lines. Are there steps you can take in that direction? Yeah, there certainly are. And uh, we do expect that we'd be looking at some of those things too. In fact, uh, we're looking uh, at the electrification uh, right now in terms of uh, 
what we might be able to do at our, with our own fleet. Uh, larger equipment becomes a little bit more of a challenge, but we certainly recognize we have uh, parts of our business that we do have opportunities to reduce our carbon footprint on. A lot of people are very interested in rural fiber development and have been for years since fiber optics became uh, part of the PUD's uh, portfolio. Uh, there's expansion that's planned for the Indiana Valley, Upper Indiana Valley, I believe, pretty soon. Do you see uh, other areas that need fiber service that you're going to be able to provide in the next couple of years? Yeah, that is a big commitment of ours. It's in our strategic plan uh, uh, to the public our benefit. We want to make sure that uh, the revenues that uh, we're able to capture go back into the community with services that they value and, and uh, fiber optics is one of the ones that, uh, if not the one that we hear the most about, the most interest in. Uh, people want uh, broadband and high speed uh, internet uh, connectivity and so uh, we have a goal to uh, uh, try and get to 90% of the county um, in the next uh, three years, actually, by 2024. And uh, we've actually uh, had a goal that was further out than that. And we're trying to accelerate it because of the interest there in our community. So certainly committed uh, to that part of our business and recognize that it's a, uh, um, a service that uh, our customers really, really enjoy. Is there a summary, uh, Kirk, do you think about what your philosophy of leadership would be for the PUD? I mean, I assume you've sort of developed your leadership style in the section that you manage now, and that's a big section. So do you think it will translate well to the full PUD? Or do you, uh, uh, do you, do you think that there are new ideas that you can adapt and, and bring to leadership? Yeah, I think uh, that's a great question. Every leader has their unique style and uh, different elements and strengths and weaknesses. And um, I'm no exception to that, uh, but uh, you know, I guess I would characterize uh, my leadership style as uh, somebody that's uh, very people oriented. Um, I love working with people and uh, I love to set high expectations and build team and to tackle problems as a team. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, that's how I would characterize uh, my leadership style and uh, try to be proactive, uh, try to try to lead um, uh, the group that I'm responsible for in a way that's uh, looking to the future, understanding what the challenges are, and to try and be out in front of them and uh, try and do everything I can to work with a solid team, build a solid team, and encourage employees. You have about three months before you uh, officially take on the, the full-time job. January 1st, I believe, is your transition date. Uh, so what do the next three months look like? Are, are you and Mr. Wright coordinating, trading notes, uh, getting ready for the handoff? How do you go about that? Yeah, uh, Steve Wright and I sit right next to each other uh, in the building. So uh, we are coordinating. We just talked yesterday, um, sharing notes back and forth. He's making sure that uh, I'm aware of assignments uh, that have been made and where they've been made. And uh, I would characterize the next three months more than anything for me as going into learning mode. Uh, I've been here a long time, 24 years, but I still recognize I have a lot to learn. And uh, uh, three months with uh, Steve as well will be an opportunity to learn uh, where his focus and priorities have been. I, I think I know I'm working closely with him, but uh, there's a lot of things that happen uh, that uh, we don't always see. So. Uh, I'll be definitely going in learning mode, talking to employees, uh, just getting to know the commissioners better, um, getting to know some of the stakeholders and uh, people in the community better. Now, you and your family have raised, I think, three children here in the Valley. Tell me a little bit about your family. Where are they, where are they all at now? Yeah, uh, I love to talk about my family. Uh, my wife and I have been married for 31 years, and uh, we've got... Uh, Three adult children now. Uh, our oldest is a uh, 25 uh, daughter and uh, she's in Boise. Uh, she's working in the accounting industry and our uh, next daughter is uh, 22 and she's in uh, Montana in the uh, Bozeman, Montana area. She just graduated uh, from school in May. I'm really proud of her and uh, she's in the film and photography uh, side of uh, the business and uh, she really enjoys the outdoors and uh, what that area has to offer. And then our youngest is uh, uh, our son uh, is the youngest. He's uh, 
20 years old and he's studying uh, business at Eastern Washington University. We raised them all here in the valley. Uh, we love this place. And, um, yeah, really good family memories here. Did you email them all with the news or call or what was their response? Oh, uh, my wife and I called them, uh, let them know uh, what was happening and uh, they were all really excited and then uh, we were able to talk to them the other night too. And it's been a real special time as a family. You're a member of Grace City Church and you're listed as a member of its leadership team, is that correct? That's correct. How long have you been attending that church? How many years? You know, it's been almost 13 years. Um, uh, wasn't right when they got started, but uh, it was uh, shortly thereafter. And I guess you've been involved with the building development and so on uh, at their current site? I have been involved in that. Uh, it's just uh, been quite special uh, to see that uh, that church go up, the facility that's out there for the community. Uh, it's been one of those things that uh, the church has felt really strongly about is that that facility would be uh, something for the community. Well, the question I have to raise, Mr. Hudson, is that the pastors of Grace City have previously sued to put an end to the governor's mandates concerning COVID-19 public health emergency. And at least one of the pastors that recently encouraged people to protest against mask requirements at the Wenatchee Public Schools. Um, with that in mind, and with your affiliation with the church, uh, will the PUD uh, continue to pledge to follow emergency public health regulations for your employees? Uh, assuming that those mandates around the pandemic persist into 2022? Uh, the PUD has uh, really been focused on compliance uh, with the governor's proclamation all along the way, and uh, we will continue to do so uh, at the PUD. That's something as a public agency uh, we need to stay in compliance with, and we watch that closely, and we've been uh, making concerted effort to really understand uh, what those requirements are and the guidelines are as well. Are you planning for a, a COVID-19 future at the PUD? I mean, are you, are you prepared for the worst if we persist in this emergency uh, in, well into the next year or beyond? You know, we are uh, planning for that. We've actually uh, had to do quite a bit of adapting ourselves uh, and we recognize this is gonna be here for a while. So um, we uh, are constantly meeting, we're meeting weekly on uh, what's happening, what the risks are, and what we need to do to adapt as an organization. Uh, and uh, we, we recognize that we're going to be in this mode for a while. Uh, I think we all uh, were hoping and thought that uh, we'd be out of this uh, by now, but uh, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. So we are certainly planning for that in the future. And, you know, it has uh, presented some challenges for our workforce too, uh, in terms of uh, being able to adapt to work remotely and uh, work back on site, make sure we have all the protection measures in place as well. Mr. Hudson, is there anything I didn't ask about that you'd like folks to know about your uh, stewardship of the PUD? You know, I just, uh, I think more than anything, um, would want people to know that uh, I love this community, uh, love the area, and uh, committed to doing everything I can in this position to uh, serve the community and to uh, provide uh, services that they value in a way that they value. And uh, also just really like to thank the Board of Commissioners for their vote of confidence and um, choosing me and uh, look forward to working with them and all of our employees and uh, uh, really big challenges we have ahead and um, just excited about it. Well, Kirk Hudson, incoming managing director of the Chelan County PUD. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you, Jefferson. Appreciate it. When your heating or cooling system is giving you trouble, call the diagnostic doctor from Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning. <laughs> Here's the culprit right here. All joking aside, when you call Dix, you're calling 35 years of experience at customer service right here in the Wenatchee Valley. Dix strongly believes in repairing before replacing, and they service all major brands of HVAC units. 
Dr. Wayne Latimer's Chiropractic and Integrative MultiCare specializes in all level of injury care. If you've been injured in an auto accident, on the job, have a sports injury, or a simple fall, call today for a free consultation. They offer a combined multi-care approach with medical, chiropractic, physical therapy, massage, and acupuncture. For relief from long-standing injuries to basic solutions for the weekend warrior, Latimer's Chiropractic Integrative MultiCare is one stop, one location. 911, what is the address of your emergency? Yes, it's me, it's my husband. I think he's had a suspect something the matter with him. It was a feeling that I'll never forget, like being able to meet them and know that he survived. Okay, tell me what's happening. Is he conscious? No, he's not. He's okay. not. Okay, take a deep breath for me. I'm getting you help. Rivercom means to me that I still have my husband here with me. They're the ones that guided me through saving his life. In a world afraid of technology, one man, one show, will bring you the newest innovations that may just change your life. This summer, Ray McNeil and your weekly tech update is your weekly tech update with Ray McNeil. It's important to take medication as prescribed and store it in a secure place. But if you have unwanted medication, then proper disposal is important. Always check the label for disposal instructions and remove any personal information. Med Project offers safe and free options in your area to dispose of your unwanted medications. For more information about what services are available in your area, call 844 Med Project or visit medproject.org. Med Project, safe and secure. At Washington Trust Bank, can't is a four letter word. I think we should hire more people. Talk and wait for a meeting. I'm thinking of starting my own practice. Mm, do it. Too much capital. We need a warehouse. I can't imagine how we do that. We should knock that wall down and expand. Do it. There's always another wall beyond the wall. We believe you can do whatever you set your mind to, and we'll help you get there. Washington Trust Bank, privately owned, locally invested. It is chilly. If you haven't been outside yet, 45 degrees. At one point this morning, we were at 41 degrees, and it's cool everywhere. Ellensburg's at 41. Uh, let's see, Moses Lake, 46 degrees. Uh, Omac, you're at 43. Downtown Dryden, 43. Suburban Dryden, 43. It's cool, and it's going to be a cool day today. Forecast details are coming up. we got a little time, so let's take one more tour, quick tour, around North Central Washington with our cameras, and now we're going back to the Cascadian, to the roof of the Cascadian, looking back up towards Wenatchee Heights and our cross camera. Nice view there. The leaves are starting to turn now just a little bit with the cooler nighttime temperatures as we're getting deeper and deeper into autumn with each passing day. Camera number two. Beautiful view of Lake Chelan from, I believe, the Lower Butte camera. South shore to your left, north shore to your right. Go team, go team, fight, fight, fight. Camera number three. McNeil Canyon checks in. Speaking of Lake Chelan, there it is again. Nice view of Lake Chelan from... The very top of McNeil Candy, that is, uh, that's a very tall tower with a camera on top of it. We love these PTZ cameras. Good morning to Lake Chelan and camera number four. Back to the Wenatchee Valley we go. And you can see that that is a 4K camera. Notice how it's the colors are a little brighter and it's a little blingier and it's a quite, it's a sharp image. Uh, those 4K cameras are nice. And we're going to start putting up more too as we get closer to winter. Good views this morning on this lovely autumn day. What do we have from the National Weather Service? Something like that. A lot of sunshine, but a little on the breezy side today. We'll get up to right around 65, which is about 10 degrees below normal. And again, we're going to be dealing with some wind, a west wind about 5 to 15 miles an hour, gusts about 20 at times. 43 for the overnight low, going to be another cool one tonight. Some residual wind, but really not much. Wednesday, partly sunny, partly cloudy. Take your pick. Maybe a light afternoon raindrop at a high of 63. We still have that cold air coming coming through. Uh, 50 for the overnight low Wednesday. It's going to be a little warmer tomorrow night because we're going to have some cloud cover. Going to hold the heat in. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the sun will be hit and miss on Thursday with a little bit of light rain and a high of 71 as we have some warmer air coming in. Uh, best chance of measurable rain overnight Thursday into Friday. A better than 50-50 chance of some precipitation, easy for me to say, on Friday with a high of uh, 69. And then, hey, how about this for the first weekend in October? Sunshine in 72 on Saturday, warmer still on Sunday, warmer still on Monday. 
That's it for us. Have yourself a great Tuesday. We will see you tomorrow for Winning Wednesday. Take care. Bye-bye.